help support my channel. I have merch with terrible, terrible dinosaur puns on it, and I also have a Patreon where I have giveaways every four months. Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'll be using this Rebor Rex to make a piece for the YouTuber Simo. So of course I've done a review on this Rex already and I'll link the video below. This poor guy, when I got him, I think it's just my personal piece, I don't think it's all Rebor Rexes, but mine has trouble standing up. Which is fine because I'm going to be customising it anyway. So first things first, let's fix that wobble. <laughs> So I'm going to be using nails and I'll be going to be clipping off the top bit of the nail and using these as my sort of metal spike going up into the Rex to hold him straight and still and stop him from breaking off the sculpted parts. Sort of securing him down. So now I've got my base out and I'm just generally sketching in where I want things to go. I'll be sculpting over that anyway, but it's for my mind to understand what's going on. Now I'm sealing the base in Mod Podge just so the, pa the paint doesn't absorb into the wood. This is just a precaution. So now I'm using Bacon Bond from Sculpies. This is to adhere my Sculpey clay down to the base. So of course I'm using an oven baked clay, which is a polymer clay. And I've rolled it through my pasta maker to make these thin sheets. I'm laying them flat all over the base and cutting off the edges. So now I'm imprinting the Rex where I think he should go to keep those feet parts in. And I'm doing a little circle where the indent of the drill hole was and drilling holes into the base. This is to secure the metal spikes to hold the Rex down. So now I'm using tin foil to create a rocks to hold up that arch of the foot. Tin foil box out the clay so you don't have a heavy wad of clay that won't bake unevenly. This sort of makes it easier to work with. I hope that made sense. Tin foil and sculpt over it helps with sculpting with polymer clay. Of course I'm using Bacon Bond there to secure it down and now I'm going to build the Rex Nest because Simo asked for a Mama Rex. So I've just rolled out a snake of clay and now I'm blending it into the shape of a nest. Of course, references people. Now I'm using, I've rolled out some egg shapes and I'm using a rag to create sort of an egg texture to it. And I'm using my toothbrush to create a rock texture to the rock. Just using a ball tool here to blend out the edge of the nest to make it a bit more natural. And of course more bacon bond to create more rocks. I think it needed more visual points to it, so I'm adding more rocks. And of course the toothbrush to texture it all. Now my stamp. This is a 3D printed stamp I got from Etsy. And it's just my signature. Now I'm permanently gluing the Rex's tail on because it's actually, you can actually pull it apart if you wanted. And I'm super gluing all the joints that I don't want to be movable. I'm sealing them all shut. And now I'm going to be using Milliput, which is a two part epoxy clay that sets within about two to three hours. And I'm sealing all the joints again and sort of making the seams disappear. I know people, some people like the things to move and stuff and I do like joints that move on my sculptures sometimes but when I want it to just be a visual piece I like to get rid of all the seams because I find that detracts from the piece I'm trying to show off if that makes sense. So of course I'm using various different tools here to create the texture that Reball has already got on the piece and one of them is my pacer. It creates a really nice bead scale effect is the tip of my pacer. <laughs> Now with the fun part, we're going to paint. So I'm using some Josonia Burnt Sienna to start the brown of the nest. Yes, I do like Citadel paints, but I prefer not to use them on large areas because they're expensive. So I use Josonia for large areas. But if I had the money, I would definitely paint with only Citadel because I love that paint. So now I'm just sort of feeling my way through and letting my hand paint the areas that I want brown. This is an undercoat that will show up underneath, underneath the different texture mediums I'm going to use. So I'm just sort of making it up as I go now. Now I'm coming in with some more Josonia in a lighter beige. I'm sort of wet blending if that makes sense. Both layers of paint are still wet so I'm sort of using that to create different consistencies of the colours together. So 
so now I'm coming with my citadel. So I say I don't like to paint in large areas, but I didn't have a green for my Drosonia, so I had to use my citadel here. So it was an expensive green patch, I guess. <laughs> but I'm undertoning with green because when I put my um, grass texture into onto on top of this and you, it seems like the green below disappears but it really doesn't if I painted a brown underneath the texture it sort of looks like a mud but when I paint green it looks like a fuller grass if that makes sense now I'm coming in with my Hallcraft gray for the rock Hallcraft is a bit of a thicker paint so I usually have to wet it down before I'm happy to use it now we come with the texture the grass texture so I'm laying down my Mod Podge as my glue you could probably use PVA for it, but I have a lot of Mod Podge. So this is the texture grass I'm talking about. So the grey undertone will create a more fuller grass when it, underneath this texture. And this is uh, stuff I got from a Warhammer scenery area. It's my husband's own personal mix though. Now I'm coming on with the, just a fluffy green moss on some of the rocks, and now we're doing a wash. So this is a wash from Citadel and it creates a nice shadowing effect and brings up all the details. I really love my washes and I highly recommend it. It can just amplify your sculpture just by adding a wash. Of course, you can see the rocks are now starting to look a bit more natural just with the wash. Washes are brilliant. Love them. <laughs> now I'm using my E6000 to glue down some different plants. And these are plants I just got from different two dollar shops and stuff and I've trimmed them down to look like tiny little leaves and plants just to add a bit more of a visual effect to this whole environment and now the plaque as requested by Simo and of course I've sealed the space in a few layers of Mr. Superclear now the painting of the eggs. So I'm going in with a nice cream white first. Then we're coming in with a darker cream and I'm just painting on some spots. Then I'm gluing them in one by one. And of course I seal them in a matte varnish. Which is not Mr. Super Clear but is slightly shiny. A satisfying peel. And that's the base done. Now the Rex. So I've base coated him in a Citadel Bone White. And now I'm going to be painting him in a cream, a full coverage. So I base coated him in a spray paint because it helps the next coat not have to use as many layers, if that makes sense. I hope it does. <laughs> so I'm covering this guy completely. So Simo sent me a reference that he wanted me to kind of mimic, so this is the reference here. This is what I'm painting. So I'm coming in with a more golden brown now from Citadel. Okay, so now it's time for first question of the day, which is, what are some options for armature wire? So I know you can get some actual proper armature wire from art stores and such. They're, it's actually very expensive stuff. I cheat and I go to my hardware which is Bunnings and I buy garden wire. I know some people say not to do that because the rust, the wire can rust but I figure it's safe inside a clay piece. If I'm making an artist doll or a puppet I tend to spend a little more and buy actual armature wire but yeah hope that helps. So now I'm coming in with a darker brown from Citadel of course and I'm starting to do the little patterny spots that this reference calls for. So now I'm coming back in with my golden brown and just really starting to add in those little tiny dotted spots. It was an interesting effect the reference had going. Some more stripes. 
lot of tiny little details to add. A lot of back and forth with lots of different paint colours. Okay, time for second question of the day. What service do you recommend on the Isles? So I don't get the opportunity to play that often, but when I do, I mostly play on Isla Nubla and Isla Nicta because they're the main two servers that I'm aware of. I'm mostly on Isla Nubla because that's where all the YouTubers and Twitch streamers that I collab with play on. Although if I'm playing with someone new and I want to introduce them to the Isles, I usually take them to Isla Nicta because I find their rules a little easier to describe. But Isla Nubla, I find their rules are a lot harder, but they make it more fun, if that makes it more sense. Makes more sense? I don't know, I think it's very biased because I've only experienced those two servers and I play on more with more experienced players on one than the other. But yeah, those are the two I play, they're the two I recommend, but there's probably other fantastic servers out there. So now I'm coming in with a little finer brush and just adding some tinier stripes just to make everything coherent. Now Citadel Black and I'll be painting the nails. Time for a manicure, or pedicure since it's his feet I guess. Now for the teeth, I'm using a Horcroft High Flow. I like this paint because it only needs one layer to go on the teeth and it's completely solid white. Now the wash. This is where the piece transforms completely from an average paint job to an amazing paint job. Love my washes. You can see how it's just brought up everything. So now I'm coming in with some lighter colors and just adding some highlights to the piece to really bring out all the muscle tones and such. And that's the Mama Rex almost done. I've got to seal it in a couple of layers of Mr. Super Clear and also paint the eyes. Now the Mama gets glued down to the base, onto her, white, her metal peg, sorry. Now, I decided to do a Bubba Rex. I originally promised that I would hand sculpt it, but because I'm fresh out of surgery, I really didn't trust my weak arm to be able to sculpt properly. So I bought this knockoff Puppo. He's very, very hideous. So there's a lot to work on. <laughs> so I've got to cut off his feet and lengthen them and also make it so he can stand up straight. I've also got to straighten the tail because that's that tail shouldn't be able to do that should be straight and his head is um, ugly <laughs> so here we go we're doing some surgery we're cutting off the tail and we're cutting off the feet tail don't need but those feet I can still use so let's drill some holes to make those pecs so I'm drilling a hole in the tail here to add some wire and wire into the feet to hold the legs together. This is so it's a bit more stable when I start sculpting the clay parts on. So here you can see I'm doing the wet wire peg between the legs and the tail. That's him all glued with his armature, well new armature. And now I'm using my two part epoxy milli part. This is a super strong clay so this should be really fine. It's a clay that sets in two hours so I have to work quick. So I'm using my various different tools to sculpt at similar patterns that the knockoff Popo has used here. Yes guys, I would have bought an actual Popo if I had more time, but I couldn't wait the two months it would have taken to get a real Popo here, so I had to buy a knockoff one from the op shop, <laughs> or second hand shop as it were. So I'm using water here to smooth out the pieces and yeah, just my silicon tools. If you're going to be customising a toy, I highly recommend um, using Milliput or a two-part epoxy putty. Highly recommend them. Do not use oven baked clay because it might molt. Might melt your piece. Not molt. Molt is yummy, but not melt. Uh, I, I'm giving up here. I'm just rum there. Mumbling and English is not happening today. So now I'm closing up the seam for the jaw so it doesn't move well, once I begin sculpting the head. The head is just so bad. <laughs> okay, so now I'm lengthening the nose to suit the Bubba Rexes from the aisles. So Simo was nice enough to go in game and take these photos for me. 
I could have taken the photos myself, but at the time I couldn't play the Isles because my arm was completely incapacitated and you need two arms to play the Isles. So you can see here I'm trying to match the Rex from the game. Whilst also keeping the textures of this toy. Now I'm rolling out little tiny teeth and adding them in. And that's a base coat for this little Bubba Rex and I think he looks okay. Pretty happy with him. So now we're doing a similar undertone like his mother had, but we're going to go a different colour set for him. So what do you think of my um transformation with this guy. Do you think I made him better or do you think I made him worse? I'm just happy he actually stands up on his own now. Not that it matters because he's going to be pinned to the base anyway. So now I'm coming with a nice golden tone just like his mum. Don't worry, he's going to be different. So yes, of course I'll be playing with Simo in the Isles very very soon, I haven't played with him yet upon making this video, but I'm very excited. I have no idea what he has planned, but I'm sure it's going to be fun. Now we're coming in with the Josonia brown, I'm using Josonia here because I just didn't have this brown colour in Citadel at the moment. Now this is where the colour tones start to change from the mother. coming in with the darker brown from Citadel. So I've got this nice burnt tone looking on this Rex and I'm very happy with the colours. Now time for the teeth. Very delicate process. <laughs> Now the eyes come in with the same colour that his mama has. And a wash of course to bring out all those details. And transform him from an average paint job to a really nice paint job. A couple of layers of Mr. Superclear to seal it all in, and then we're super gluing this guy down to the base. And I'm wrapping him around his mum to make it look like his mum is protecting him, because that's exactly what she would be doing. And that's everything done! I really hope Simo likes it, and I hope he's all enjoyed the video and like how it turned out. I'm pretty happy with the whole look of the piece. And I'm excited, very, very excited to play with Simo. I wonder if I get to play as the Rex with him. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye!